Okay, we are now live. Uh, welcome everybody. Appreciate you joining us for tonight's session. Uh, it's going to be conducted by Mary Relic, Mass Youth Soccer's risk manager, uh, which I think most of you probably know. If not, uh, you will get to know Mary uh, there to help you with all the all things having to do with uh, adult registrations and managing the U.S. Soccer Connect uh, platform to to manage all, all of our compliance needs and risk management. <clears throat> excuse me, needs. Uh, joining her is Andrew Simpson, who is our uh, key uh, account person with Stack Sports, uh, who provides the U.S. Soccer Connect uh, system platform, as well as the Club Connect platform. So, uh, Mary, it's all yours. Hi, and welcome. As Mike said, I'm, my name is Mary. I'm the risk manager for Massachusetts Youth Soccer. And tonight, we're going to um, walk you through the web pages on the Master Soccer website that um, will give you all the information you need as an administrator to ensure that your adults and players are properly registered with Mass Youth Soccer. And then Andrew is going to show you how an adult registers using US Soccer Connect and then how they link to your organization when they do register. Then after the adult registers, how they log back into their account and find the training links um, in their account. And then he'll take us through US Soccer Connect um, as an administrator and show you the tools that are available to you to help manage all your requirements as the risk manager or registrar for your organization. So the first thing um, I'm gonna do is share my screen and take you through those web pages. So you'd go to www.masoccer.org and then under the administration tab, the first web page we're gonna start with is the organization registration web page. On here, you're going to see it uh, has the fall information. So Massachusetts soccer registrations are for a year. This will change over to spring information, but once you register, um, as an adult, or once you register your players with us, um, they are registered for the year. You don't have to register them in the fall and the spring. So I'm going to start with the fee submission form because all organizations will complete a fee submission form. On this form, you're going to put the number of players and the number of adults that you have registered for your programs. Then you're going to, it will auto automatically calculate the amount that you owe and you'll send the fee submission form along with payment into Mass Youth Soccer. And then if you have adults or players that register later on, you would complete a new fee submission form, put just that number of adults and players on it and send that in again with payment. So now we're going to go to, um, the player registration data and how we capture that. For organizations that use the Sports Connect Club product, they do not upload player registration data. That data flows up to Mass Youth Soccer via the US Soccer Connect link. So we will see your players register in real time if you use Sports Connect. If you use a different registration platform um, as your local registration platform, then you're going to be um, completing a player Excel template, an upload template of your player registration data. So this first link shows the help guide from US Soccer Connect. It's US Soccer Connect specific, shows you where the upload portal is, different things from them. The second help guide is Mass Youth Soccer specific, and that will um, give you information that will help ensure that you have a smooth upload process. It tells you what to look for in your upload so you don't make a mistake, um, which would take longer when you are trying to upload it. And then again, here's the template. And then you have the play level information PDF here. Anytime you um, have to create a player upload template, you'll need to add the play level information. So you can click on that and find that out. And again, once you upload your players, they're in there for the year. You don't have to re-upload and pay for them again. So if you have new players that come on and you don't use Sports Connect, you're going to need to create another player upload template um, and send that up into or upload that into US Soccer Connect. 
There's more information here. And if you have any questions on this information, you can contact Rachel Wu. Okay. Then under the same tab, the administration tab, we're going to go to the adult registration webpage. The adult registration process webpage holds all the information that your adults need to complete the registration process, all the required trainings to the point where they're in full compliance and can participate. If they read the body of the um, webpage here, it will tell them everything they need to do. And then we have a checklist for them. We also have a checklist for the Sports Connect adults. It's, even if your adults register in Sports Connect with you, they'd still have to complete the Mass Youth Soccer adult registration online with us directly. And that outlines the dual registration process. And then we have new user, returning user help guides, safe sport help guides, concussion. Um, we also, so we accept the CDC and we accept the U.S. Soccer Learning Center concussion awareness trainings. There's other resources for your adult members to review. Then next, we're going to go to the risk manager information webpage. This is what holds all the information that you as a risk manager need to make sure your adults are fully registered and in compliance with Mass Youth Soccer requirements for um, safe sport and concussion. The risk manager responsibilities and guidelines document takes you through um, the complete process. It tells you what you need, what, you, what your adults need and what you need to do to make sure that they, they can participate. On the right-hand side, are the help guides and different information. The first section are um, the memos that are sent out from this department. Anytime you feel like you missed new information from the risk management department here, from the adult registration um, information, you can come here, look, see what we've uploaded there and click on it to find um, the new communications that went out. Then lesson one is really, so. The um, risk manager responsibility and guidelines. Lesson one takes you again through everything so you can print your adult's credential. The information below here, these help guides are really useful tools to help the process go smoother. Um, how to run reports, it'll tell you different reports that will give you the most information about certificate um, uploads if, they're in, if your adults are in compliance for that. Then we have, um, how to provide security user permissions uh, to your organization's administrators and tips, which again is very, they're very useful help guides to help you navigate US Soccer Connect easier. Then we have the registration portal and the login portal. Once an adult registers and once you register, you don't need to go through the registration portal again unless you need to add an organization. You're going to, after you're registered, from then on, you're going to log in to do your administrative tasks and to update your account. So you'll use the login portal after that. We do have some uh, risk manager checklist, which will help you, again, understand what you need to have in place to get the administrative access you need um, to manage your adults in US Soccer Connect. And then some email templates that will download as Word documents that you might want to use. Um, we have a full version and a short version of the adult participant startup email, which just is something you can take off our website and use to let your adults know they need to register. Excuse me a second, Mary. It can you just go up and uh, no, never mind. Somebody was having a difficult time with the, the risk manager checklist downloading, but it does work. I'm sorry. Okay, are we okay? And then we have um, the risk status classifications and adult credential troubleshooting guide. This guide is, again, another useful tool for you when you don't know why your adult, your adult's adult credential won't print. This outlines what risk statuses the adult needs to be in for it to print and what could be wrong with their account um, and what we need to fix in order for them to be in full compliance. The administrator proof of query verification form is the form that you as a risk manager will need to download off our website 
and then upload into your adult members account once you query verify them. And query verification is actually the process of verifying their personal information. There are two ways to do it. You can um, meet with them and you need to physically look at their ID, make sure the first name, last name are spelled correctly on their query acknowledgement form, which they print out of the system and make sure the last six digits of their social security number match and also check their date of birth. If all that information is correct, you would upload the administrator proof of query verification form, check them off as query verified in the system, and they'd be good to go. If any of that information is incorrect, you would send me an email and I will update what I need to update. And then if need be, we'll process new background checks for them. And then I'll let you know when you can go ahead and query verify that adult. Also, if you get the, the notarized query acknowledgement form, um, that, that is the second way that you can perform the query verification process. You can have them send you that notarized form and then upload this um, document once you receive that form. Okay, so there, again, there's, there's a lot of useful information here. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out should you have questions on it. So Mary, a quick question. Um... Yeah came in <clears throat> i know it's going to be common with a lot of <clears throat> excuse me a lot of people is that um as some of the leagues are moving over to the uh sports connect and u.s soccer connect platform for league management uh the question here is my adults are registering and going to an archived team not the active team can you address that please okay yes so if if your adults are registering in sports connect to an to an archive program that that means you need to contact us soccer connect and make sure your hierarchy is set your your program is set up right under the right hierarchy so it would be when you set up a program now it would be the league well it would be us soccer us youth soccer mass youth soccer your league and then your club um so there has to be a, a whole flow to make sure your adults register to the right spot. And that's only happening for those leagues that are using Sports Connect. For those leagues that are not, right. um, they they should not they should see their the club name or town name without archived after it. Right, right. And so it, the adult, just so you know, the adult can't register into US Soccer Connect. They can't register with Mass Youth Soccer under an archive program because those programs aren't available when they register. So if they are registering to an archive program, it's in the Sports Connect Club product, not in the US Soccer Connect product. And then in order to find those uh, the adults once they register to the correct program, you're going to need dual access. So, you know, please email me and let me know um, if you're having issues finding your adults in US Soccer Connect, because then we need to provide you with the correct information and the correct user permissions because you're going to need to see your old program and you're going to the old archive program and your new program. Okay, I hope I addressed that okay, but send me an email and um, me and Andrew will help you out. Um, so then again, under the administration tab, we have the adult credentials webpage. And on this webpage, it's kind of a repeat because the risk manager responsibility and guidelines document does walk you through all this. But what you do need to know is once you do go to print um, adult credentials, they come up as a PDF pop-up. So you need to make sure that you allow pop-ups. If you have any issues, then you can check out the uh, managing pop-up blocker help guide here. That will show you how to turn it off for your different, um, for like Chrome or the Edge or what, whatever program you're using um, on your system. Then we have, um, again, the risk status, classifications, and troubleshooting, a good good document for you to look at. At the bottom here is how to order uh, lanyards and plastic sleeves. So, you know, if you need to order those, please come to the adult credential webpage and then look at the bottom and it will explain to you how you can order those. Um, two other pages that I really would like to show you tonight are the adult athlete safe sport information webpage. 
this uh, is the new requirement as of January 1st, 2022. Adult athletes, which is a player who's 18 years of age or older, has to take the safe sport core training. So if you have um, players that are on a team who are 18, and with Mass Youth Soccer, if they, if they are 17 going to be 18 during the playing season, we want them to also take the safe sport training with parental consent. Um, but they would need to, before, they, before you roster the players to a team, if they're on a team with 17 year olds, with minors, um, or anybody under 17, they need to take that core training before they're rostered to a team. This webpage explains all the requirements for that. And then key on this webpage would be to email Matthew Soccer at aasafesportinfo at matthewsoccer.org. When you email this um, email address, we're going to send you the enrollment key that the players need or the players' parents need to take the training for free and link themselves to U.S. Soccer. I also have a um, adult athlete email template that you might want to take a look at, and it it, it will. It, you can send this out to your players or the players' parents. It will just help you with the process. Um, and then again, we, we tell you how to manage the requirements or how you can, not how to, but how you can manage these requirements. The other new webpage we have is mandatory reporting. And mandatory reporting, um, we partnered, Mass Youth Soccer partnered with Players Health. You can report through, it's the same portal, but it's two different processes. So you can report um, known suspected or known or suspected child abuse through the link here. And if you're unsure what to do, you know, you can go ahead, complete that report and players health will help us understand what next mm -hmm. steps need to be taken. Then we also have for prohibited conduct. So if you Read the um, Massachusetts Youth Soccer Safe Sport Athlete and Participant Safety Policy in Appendix A. It outlines prohibited conduct. If you if if that happens, you need to report that you have a violation of it. You can also report that here. And again, if you're unsure what to do, um, you can make that report, and Players Health will take a look at it and help guide us in the right direction of what the next steps are. I think that's it for the web pages that I wanted to show everybody. I'm gonna let Andrew go ahead and uh, walk you through an adult registration. Sure. And so a couple, couple, couple questions, Mary, before we go on <clears throat> is, <clears throat> excuse me, question regarding, you know, the oldest acceptable dates for CDC concussion, safe sport mm -hmm. uh, and the Corey form. Uh, so, First off, okay. the, the Corey acknowledgement form is is basically a once in a lifetime form. Once the Corey acknowledgement form is put up there and it's acknowledged, that's it. It never has to be done again. But these talking about the dating on the CDC concussion and safe mm -hmm. sports certificate. Yeah. So, and, and I'll just I'll just add to the uh, Corey verification, right? So once the adults Corey verified, unless they have a legal name name change. You don't need to do that again. Once they're checked off in U.S. Soccer Connect, is Corey verified, they're good. Um, for safe sport, so safe sport is a yearly requirement. Anybody who takes safe sport training or took safe sport training January 1st, 2022, is their training is valid for the 2022-2023 registration year. And, that's, and, and that would hold true if they take the training January 1st, 2023 or later. It's good for the 2023-2024 season. Then for concussion, we have a June 1st cutoff of the prior year. So this year we're in 2022 at 2023. So it, it, our policy is it's good for two years, but it has to be taken June 1st of 2021 or later in order to be valid for a full two-year cycle in um, you know, a soccer registration year. And all that information is outlined on the um, Risk Manager Responsibilities Guide and Guidelines document. But that is the dates that you need to look for. Okay. Mary, another question here, uh, just not sure. It, uh, 
when or will the dashboard for fall be updated? Uh, for example, if coaches completed requirements in the spring because mm -hmm. they were just starting to coach in the spring, should they be okay for this fall? So it again, it, it's based on um, an upload date of the required training. So if a coach, so I'll just tell you that a um, risk status can last up to three years, right? Background checks can last up to three years. If the adult just took safe sport training, again, this spring, right, in January, that that should still be, it is still valid and it should still be checked as approved in US Soccer Connect if it was indeed already verified in there, it shouldn't have been removed. We removed old certificates that did not meet the criteria for approval for this year. So we only removed verification and certificates for safe sport that were taken prior to January 1st. So December 31st and earlier were taken out of the system. Anything that was taken January 1st or later was left in. So if, if the adult somehow that certificate got taken out, they can upload a new one. And as long as it's January 1st, 2022 for safe sport, they're good. And the same with concussion. We we unverified and took information out of the system based on a date. So anybody who should have been valid for this registration year would have been left um, in the system as valid. And if they were taken out and they have that certificate, they can always upload that and, and you can approve it if it was June 1st, 2021 or later. Okay. All right, the uh, couple questions about different ways for the concussion requirement. Uh, so uh, Master Soccer originally only recognized the CDC concussion requirement. And the uh, the process would be that the, uh, the, the adult would print out their CDC, their certificate, uh, that would need to be uploaded into their account, which they actually could do using their dashboard. And then that would be uh, verified at the, uh, the club level. We also do accept U.S. Soccer's uh, player health and safety uh, course as a, uh, another way to meet that requirement because it has a pretty good concussion training component to that course. Most coaches that are taking uh, grassroots courses and or other licensing courses are required to take that player health and safety. So that you can also have that create a certificate, uh, which can be uploaded. In addition, we get a API feed from the uh, Federation, which should, uh, Mary, if you want to put some clarity on that, but that also gets captured by us. Yes. Yeah, so let me just say that if you take the U.S. Soccer Learning Center course, there's not a certificate that they they get. If they use the same first name, last name, and email address, the API feed will work. It will automatically update um, that adult's account to show them as verified. It checks it off. It's all good. If the adult uses a different email address or a shortened version of their name, it, does, it doesn't connect. And that adult needs to either update their name in one of the systems, or they need to send us or contact U.S. Soccer Connect and give us their um, USSF Learning Center ID number because it's the ID number that connects it all, okay? And the CDC concussion is always an upload. There's no API feed with the uh, CDC. So the adult always needs to download that certificate and then upload it into their account in US Soccer Connect. Okay. Um, question about the safe sport code, uh, people, how, how does somebody get the safe sport code to go take the course? Oh, so adults need to register with Mashu Soccer first. And then once they register, they, um, log back into their account and Andrew's going to show you how they'll do that. But when they register with Mashu Soccer, they get a thank you for registering email. It explains that they log, there's the login link is right there in their email. They click on that link, they log back into their account. Under their certificates tab is the enrollment key um, with the training link that automatically connects them to US soccer and provides the training for free to them. Okay. okay. Um, got a question here that I can address. The, we have a, a club uh, that is using Got Sport. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, how do these requirements relate to what Mass Youth has on file? These two systems do not speak with each other. They're two separate uh, systems. So uh, you can use Got Sport for your player registrations. 
And uh, then you would use the upload process that Mary went uh, through earlier uh, that is uh, on the on that web page she shared. As far as the adults are concerned, all adults need to register directly with Mass Youth Soccer and that every club has uh, the, uh, has the ability for their risk manager, registrar, president to have ac administrative access to look on uh, their section of US Soccer Connect to see where their adults stand. But uh, these two systems they do not talk with each other. All right. Is it to me now? Only, uh, I'll just add into that point. Um, as far as your safe sport and any uh, learning center items, you know, with the API that exists, if you your information is updated uh, in safesporttrain.org or in the learning center, you know, you won't necessarily have to download documents out of Scott Sport, then upload into Source Connect. It'll link there with the API, first name, last name, date of birth, email address, and then bring that information over so you're not uploading downloading certificates. All right, so uh, I will I will be quick, but I won't be in a hurry here to try and move through this uh, as effectively as possible. So we'll kind of, as Mary mentioned, just what I'll do first is just walk through uh, what the registration process looks like uh, for your individual adults. I apologize in advance if I use the word admin or coach, uh, as you know, Massachusetts, that, that falls under the larger umbrella of adults. So any of the adults that are registering with you um, this is the process that they'll need to go through, uh, you know, to to continue for the organization. So this is uh, the adult slash quarter registration page. I'll just throw this link in the chat in case anyone doesn't have it. But again, this is where any of your, your adults will need to do their registration annually uh, or seasonally. So some may have done it, you know, at the beginning of this year, but with this being a new season, they would need to complete it again, you know, for this seasonal year. So on this landing page, you go to the registration button or this register now button here. I'm just going to go in as a test uh, account. So again, you want anyone who's done this in the past, they want to you know, come back in as a returning user no need to create a new account. Uh, if you've forgotten your password, you can certainly trigger that to your email address so you're not creating a duplicate there. After you've logged in, I am going to cut my camera off because my other screen is over here. Don't want, no one needs to stare at the side of my head unnecessarily. So what you'll see here is uh, you'll be given just this one option of the fall 22, spring 23 season. And then this is for the Corey registration. So in green, that continue. And then you'll see the contact information and or you would see any of your family members uh, that are connected to your account here. Just as a reminder, you may see other adults that are here, but if every Adult needs to submit this uh, on their own and not on behalf of anyone else in your family, uh, you know, to respond to those questions. So everyone would need to log in and, and take care of those requirements uh, on their own. Just a friendly reminder. So as you say, continue, you'll see that my option is to sign in as this Diana test, which is who I am logged in as. So I would say register as coach slash admin. Again, I just have one option here uh, for the program. Just want to confirm that this information uh, is correct. Any updates to address or your admin information, driver's license information if needed to be. And then you'll see in this area, this additional information area, you'll see some questions asked uh, to you from Mass Youth. So uh, the one here is going to be your primary organization. So again, if this has changed, is this will default to the uh, organization that you registered with last. So if this information has changed, just make sure to update that. Uh, you can update any roles that apply. And again, uh, you'll see the drop down here if you have a secondary organization um, uh, or a third organization. Uh, if you need to be 
register to more than three, then you'll just want to reach out to the Mass Youth Soccer office and they can help get it squared away there. Uh, again, you'll see some of the, these required questions down. And then you'll see uh, these questions that need a response. Again, these will automatically fill based on a previous response if you have completed this uh, application or registration in year prior. So you'll just want to ensure that these answers are still accurate. Uh, and then, you know, for this year, there were a couple additions uh, that Mass Youth made. So that you'll just want to make sure that uh, in any of these down below that you've updated those accordingly or filled those in. Obviously, they're required, so they're not going to let you go to the next page, but you will see some, uh, some that, a couple that have been added there. So we'll say save and next page. So then you'll come to this page and again, uh, you can read through these are the electronic legal and disclosure agreements. Each one is in its own box here and then there's a checkbox to accept uh, on the left hand side. So once you've read and then click to accept in each of these, then you will make sure to put in your first name, last name, legal first name, last name, agree and continue. You'll see there's no payment due, so you can click uh, into the green to continue here. And in this case, registration is complete. If your background check is expired, or your risk status is expired, then you will be given, you'll be prompted to go and complete that um, to, to satisfy that requirement. But if not, then you'll see this. Uh, you can print those ELAs if you need or print out that agreement. So. That would be the steps uh, for any individual adults that you have going through that registration. The next piece that we will do is we'll just log out of this and then show uh, what it looks like now from the My Account screen uh, for still this user. Uh, so if I am this user and I'm logging back in to system. My account is where any of your uh, certificates will go. Um, again, you'll see all your family members here across the top. So you'll just want to ensure that you've selected the correct um, individual that you're looking for. And then the main area would be in this certificates tab here. Uh, so you'll see information as far as Safe Sport Training. Uh, and if you need to go to Safe Sport Training, this is the link that you'll want to use. Uh, if you have any uh, one that's coming back to you saying that they have been asked to pay a fee to go through Safe Sport Training, it's likely because they haven't used this link. So if you provide this link, uh, you, you will not be charged a fee to go through your Safe Sport Training or your Safe Sport Refresher courses. So that is uh, an issue that comes up from time to time. Uh, the coaches will see a fee and obviously there's no fee uh, for that training. The concussion training, learning center, all the links are there. And then this is the area where if needed, uh, if the API hasn't pulled over the information, um, then you can click to upload. So if I were to want to upload a Safe Sport document, uh, it's gonna pop up in another window. This goes back to a similar thing. There are Occasionally some pop-up windows as we work through our system. So just want to ensure you have pop-up blocker off uh, within anywhere within Sports Connect. And maybe this will open up for me. All right, so then I would just say to choose uh, my file. After I choose it, it'll show it to me here before I upload so that I know that this is a, a document or item that I want to upload. So then I would say upload image. And now it's uploaded here into my account.
So now it's visible uh, to the state. It's visible also to my to my town or, or club registrar there. They could see it on, on my MM profile as well. Am I missing anything on my account, Mary? No? I don't know if you want to just show them how the adult can see under that applications tab, like who they registered to for what year and, you know, that information. Sure. Yeah, so this would give you uh, just a quick glance to see that uh, in years past, you know, which club or organization it's, you've been affiliated with and where uh, your, your, your registration is. And just as a reminder, uh, if you were to look at it same day as your adult Corey registration, uh, the system will update overnight. So if you, you know, select a uh, club in the first drop down or second and third drop downs and you were to go into your my account that same day it wouldn't have the application but if you were to go back in uh, after that next day the application will be created overnight so if i had selected uh, clubs here then tomorrow i would see those organizations listed in my application as well and and that would be um, a good opportunity to say to the administrators that when somebody tells you that they registered you don't see them that same day. If they say they registered, the system updates overnight, and that's when they fall under your organization. It'd be the next day. So I will log out here. And now uh, what I'll do is I'll log in um, as a club registrar level access, so uh, likely a similar level of access to what any of you or some of you may see within the system. I don't, don't know why logging out is gonna take this long. Boy, oh boy. So when you log in, the first place that you're going to be directed is just your general dashboard. Uh, and in this very top area, you'll see a couple of important things. One is the seasonal year. So you'll just want to make sure that you are in the correct seasonal year. Uh, I'm, I'm going to demo this from a different seasonal year, but just to be sure that you pay attention to the seasonal year that you want to work in, in addition, You'll see these messages in this gray box uh, come from Massachusetts. So if there's any urgent items or things that they may update throughout the year, you would see those updates here. Uh, down below, I'm going to see uh, player admin and team counts. Uh, any of these, if I want, then I can click and view just those specific uh, players, admins, or teams. Um, and just to, to highlight the difference to so players assigned, uh, for those that are building uh, rosters, likely uh, members that are using you know, our software for the league scheduling, you would see this players assigned. Once they've been assigned to a roster, players pending is what many of you would see. Uh, if you were uh, running programs in-house and not using scheduling software from us, and you would just, as for you upload, you would see the players pending as the number of players you have within your club at that time. Uh, same logic goes for admins assigned and admins pending assigned means that they've been assigned to a team, uh, pending that they have not been assigned to a team. And again, many of you would see your pending admins once they've completed uh, their adult core registration in that uh, in your dashboard. And then team counts, same thing, let you know how many teams active and inactive there. This compliance widget uh, on the right hand side shows uh, the, the requirements that are put forth um, by the state and what we did want to show here is so you can click any of these magnifying glass to just narrow down individuals that have or haven't uh, completed a specific item, uh, say sport being 
likely a bigger one. So when I click on the magnifying glass there, I can see that I can sort this by my incomplete or my complete or all. Uh, and from there, I have the option to email either this entire group uh, if I want, uh, or I could email just certain members. So if I then click email selected members, I want to send these individuals a reminder that, hey, you know, we're still showing that your safe sport is incomplete, then this is where I could do it. And then I have this uh, general email template builder uh, with I have some macros on the left hand side. So if I wanted to put the system to fill in their first name, last name, um, then certainly could. If I wanted for my signature to be from the league slash club name, could you want you would want to update this from name so you know who the email comes into the inbox from and then your subject there again if i've uh, done the work of writing the email and then realize that there's individuals that I don't want to email it's still going to show me uh everyone that i've selected down here below so i could uncheck uh, any of those users there so you'll see this uh, email builder. There's a few different ways to get to it or a few different ways, um, you know, of groups of individuals that you can highlight to reach out to them. So again, this, uh, this compliance widget, any of these magnifying glass will take you just to those and you can see your complete or incomplete individuals there. And, and Sorry, I was just going to say, do you want to touch on like if there's an uploaded document that the widget doesn't update right away. So if there's an upload, uploaded document and the administrator clicks on it and verifies it, um, it's it's hours or the next day before they see that um, person as a, as approved on the widget. It's right away in their account. It's immediate in their account. Yep, the that's a good point. Yeah, typically the widget is on like about a four hour um, window. So again, yeah, if you verified a document in someone's profile and you come right back here to this compliant widget, you won't see it right then, but you will see it not long um, after that. Okay. So the next uh, area that will show are these just player and admin uh, lookup screens. They are very similar in nature. Um, but there are a few different uh, features that will exist uh, as far as the filters available. So uh, you'll see here in my drop down, I'm already defaulted to my club. You should see a club and a program option here. But again, you have the option, you have you can sort by uh, your risk filters. So if you want to look at just your adults that are in a certain risk filter, uh, that is an option that you have. And then we've added um, this here. So you can sort by those with the concussion certificate, your core verification or safe sport document. And then you can sort that by, typically the ones that you would need to look at would be those that are Uploaded and unverified, those would be ones that you need, you know, that there would be something for you to update on your side of things. Uh, obviously not uploaded, maybe individuals that you would need to reach out to, uh, to remind them gently that they would want to update that information. Let me see why I don't have any club lookup. So here, this is better. So you would see the club here. And then you would see your programs underneath. Likely, uh, in many cases, you would only see one program there underneath, uh, but you can sort that filter out. This is, again, this is a player uh, lookup. It's very similar. You can search by first name, last name. You can search um, by that application date or can filter by uh, gender, age group, play type. So when I search here, I same thing. I can see individual players here. If I want to select a few of these players to send an email to and uh, check on them, email selected players, and I'm going to get the same email builder uh, as before. It's obviously I've selected a different group of individuals to reach out. Um, let me go back here. Maybe the admin lookup will be more cooperative. All right, so that's better. 
I'll show uh, just a general, so what you would see within uh, an admin's profile. So in John's uh, profile, you can see that this, the core verification document was verified, who was verified, verified by, and then when. And you'll see that these first last name fields are locked down. Uh, this is a recent addition that we've made. If you have individuals um, that want to use their preferred name, you'll see this box. Uh, those individual adults would have the option to fill in this box, but only uh, use a club registrar or at the state level would have the option to check this box. And so if this box is checked within their account, when you print the adult credential, that will display as their first name uh, at that time. But again, the individual uh, admin or adult won't have the option to check that box. They will have the option to update uh, this text box there with the name that they would like to see displayed. Again, you would see the risk status uh, down below. And then you do have uh, the this get learning center updates, get safe support updates. Uh, this is if you would like to check if for some reason the data from the learning center or safe support are not coming over to someone's account, you can it, click on this and that'll pull the API. So if that information is there and for some whatever reason it hasn't linked, uh, then you can force the system to take a look at that. You also see this in the upper right. Uh, so if you have a list of admins that you're working through in your search before, and you just wanna go to the next in your list, uh, this gives you an easy way to just kind of navigate quickly through uh, those admins. Can you show how you upload, how an administrator uploads um, the concussion or say support document for the? Sure. Um, so uh, it would look obviously very similar to how it does in my account. Once you went into an individual's profile, if you click on this box again, you'll get the pop up and then you can choose a file. Same thing, it'll give you the preview here before. You'll see it pop up in there. And just uh, a note that if the if that field is checked off as verified, the adult can't upload a new document. For that document to be deleted, you would need to uncheck the box, press save, and then go into the document itself. And the delete button will be up on the top right. So you have to unverify before you can delete a document. And once the document's in there, you can't upload a new one until it's gone. Thanks for that, Mary. Yep, just that's good, very good reminders there. So this document has not been verified. You can see that there's no checkbox there. So if I click back on this document, it gives me the options to edit, delete. But once I have verified it, you can see that those edit and delete options go away here. So just as Mary said, you'll have to unverify and then you can delete the document. Again, if someone's put in a bad document and you verify it, then you'll, you'll want to unverify first and then proceed from there. The one other, uh, we will show these reports if you'd like to view things in a little bit different sense. I won't show that part just yet. Let me go here. So in the counts reports page, uh, we have a report that's called uh, the admin dynamic certificate data or admin credentials dynamic certificate data. My apologies. So again, you will see, um, you know, it'll default to your club and your program. So once you generate this report, it'll open and pop up you have options uh, if you'd like to export this. So you'll see these options available to you to export this data. But what we wanna show is obviously it'll have the uh, inform general information, contact information for your admins. And then you'll see uh, where their risk status is, if their adult credential has been printed, and then you'll see uh, when their concussion certificate, quarry verification, and safe sport were or were not uploaded. 
uh, if they have been verified, who they've been verified by, the date, and if there is an expiration date listed for them. So again, this gives you a nice overview, um, you know, and if you want to download it and thumb through it that way, for those that have, you know, a large number of admins, this may be uh, a simpler way to, to view it there. And again, we would uh, just point out that this is uh, a report, you know, you can save. And then when you go into my reports, you'll see it as a saved report. Uh, obviously, you can see here that this was created on 727, but when I go to generate this report, it's going to pull the data in real time. So no matter when I save the template, you know, it's going to pull that data in real time. So it's going to be as accurate as the data can be when you actually pull that report up. We have the same uh, document available uh, for players. Uh, and the big thing there, as Mary mentioned before, is those that are uh, 17 turning 18 that are doing the safe sport training to be in the same, same way, that player credentials. And the only thing we'll, we'll point out here, it does show player age in there. So it'll show their age as of the day that you generate the report as well as their date of birth, just as a reminder, and then would show their safe sport if anything has been uploaded, verified, et cetera, et cetera. So this would be most useful for the people who use Sports Connect, right, at the club level, because their data flows up and, and is immediately into the system where any, if anybody uploads the player registration data, their data might not be pushed into the system for quite a while. So in order to use this tool to manage the um, players, safe sport, it, um, it is most useful for the club, uh, Sports Connect Club uh, administrators. Very good. And I think the last thing uh, we'll, we'll point to the upload portal. Uh, and again, this is how you know many of you get players in here. You'll see option of your new upload, or you can view uh, the history and the status on your past uploads. Uh, and typically, you'll see uh, either rejected, pending, or approved in your past uploads. Uh, if they've been rejected, there will be a note on there. You'll also get an email, an automated email from the system, letting you know there's been an upload, an update to your upload, but. Uh, within this upload tab is where any of the templates would be. Uh, and again, for Massachusetts, it will only be player uploads. So admins are not uploaded. They need to go through the adult slash query registration. So you would download a template here, either an Excel file or CSV uh, file. And then you'll select your club, your program, and then the, the season next. I'll ask you for the file that you'd like to upload. And then it'll process and verify. So here on this screen, the system will start to take a look at the data that you have put in, and then it'll try to, to match that uh, to the system. And so in this case, uh, you'll see this number here in red it shows me that there's zero invalid. Uh, so the, all this data that is in, the upload matches cross here. So the system is gonna allow me to go ahead and submit that upload. If there's any issues, uh, you'll see it in red on the player record, and then it'll let you know which item uh, is given the, the trouble. And again, you would just wanna delete the spreadsheet, make your corrections, and then re-upload. So when you say next, you can add additional email addresses if you need uh, multiple individuals to receive the notice. Uh, this will default to the individuals that you had uh, on the email the last time that you sent it. So you, then the final step will be to say import. And then again, just as a reminder for Massachusetts, this will put yours uh, into a pending status. And then once they review, and approve, then you would see that player data within the system. So again, you won't see that player data uh, right away. So it'll take a little bit just to get that upload document into the pending status. And then once it's approved, you would see any of that player data showing uh, in your dashboard and in your player lookups on that side. 
pushes, thumbing through the questions. And I so think- let me, uh, kick in with the, let me kick in with a few to start with uh, that we have uh, this coming in, Mary, is um, do you have suggestions on how to troubleshoot if someone has registered, but they're not showing up as an admin pending on the, uh, on the dashboard? So if, if some if they if the adult says they registered and they're not showing up on your dashboard, either they just registered that day or they didn't register to your organization or they didn't register at all. So there's there's certain times if, if somebody says, yes, I, you know, I registered and they're not showing up on the dashboard um, and they did it the day before, you can contact US Soccer Connect or you can contact me or you could do what Andrew, how Andrew showed you to go ask the adults to go back in their account, click on their applications tab and say, did you choose our organization? Because sometimes they make that mistake. It's a drop down of choices to pick the organization and it's very easy to choose the wrong one. So the adult themselves can check it by logging back in, clicking their applications, their, yeah, I think their applications tab and, and viewing it there or US Soccer Connect can check for you or I can. Okay. Um, just. Having just gone through the the upload section here, I just want to make sure that everybody understands because we have a lot of new organizations affiliated with us, is that the upload is for player data only. Do not upload any adult data, which is your coaches and administrators and the such. So it's the the it's for player data only. Also, please do us a favor and make sure you use the template. And that everything is correct because we are dealing with a situation right now, Mary's smiling, where somebody sent up uh, data to us, but for some reason, the email column uh, was uh, brought down one row. And then the data came in, we reviewed it. You know, we don't know whose email belongs to who. We just made sure our, we we do a cleansing of it before we you know certify the upload. Well, this went through, and so what essentially happened was a lot of players got attributed to the wrong adults account. So some people uh, going in uh, may you know they, I think it's just one club, maybe another, but may see that they're logging into their account as a as a parent uh, or an adult and the child on there is not theirs. So uh, that's being corrected and being looked at. And some people have posted that question as well, Mary, because uh, they experienced that. Uh, Mary, if you're using Sports Connect, is there a way to verify that your players have been uploaded to the Mass U Soccer, uh, US Soccer Connect level? Yeah, so if you're using Sports Connect and you, so you don't upload them, but the, the data transfers, you know, automatically up to the association level. So log in at the association level. And then like Andrew showed, you know, you go to the player lookup, go to player lookup, you know, click search and um, all your players who are registered should show up at that point because it's real-time registration. Okay. Um, somebody asked for a little bit of clarification on the difference between an under 18 as a coach and then a uh, that uh, let me see the pro it's clarify that the adult player status is it would be similar to that of the adult of the I guess you should say the the child coach status these are two different things two totally different things they are not using the same processes so uh, there is a process if you have a coach who's Eight, under the age of 18, there are steps on how you would go about having them uh, use the system. Uh, I don't know, Mary, if you want to get it up on your screen and do a, do a screen share. Okay. And then as far as players that are 18 and over, there are specific steps that you would use from them, but do not register players 18 and over as adults.
Okay, like, like Mike said, so the, the, the difference too is we, we don't want the adult athlete players that are 18 or the 17 year olds that with parental consent should take six for training to register online as an adult. We're, we don't process background checks on them. Um, we, we do what we're supposed to do as far as cross checking them on different lists, but they don't register as adults. To, to register um, an under 18 as a, a coach or assisting coach is different. Um, we don't process background checks on the under 18, but in order for them to get an adult credential, they do have to register as adults. And every under 18 does have to take the concussion awareness training. And they, again, can take CDC or the USSF Learning Center training for concussion awareness. Um, if, if the player has, or if it's a player, right, and they have registration data in the system, they're under 18, and they're going to help out as an assistant coach, and they need to register. There's different steps to help them register. U.S. Soccer Connect can help them, but you can also help them by reviewing this help guide. Um, it sounds like a lot, but you just you create a, a guardian or parent account for them, and you do a couple of things, give them the information they need, and they can register as an adult. They are immediately given an under 18 risk status and we don't process those background checks on them. And we also have a um, risk status under 18 safe sport upload PDF because they don't need to take it. If that under 18 is 17 and gonna be 18 during this, the season that they're gonna participate with, yes, you can have them take safe sport training. You can have them register then on, um, or they would have to go, they would register, they would get that under 18 um, risk status. On their 18th birthday, they need to go back in the system because they'll have an expired risk status. And then we will process background checks on them. Okay, so. Uh, all right, there's a couple others came in earlier that I went and answered privately to the folks, but they may pertain. Somebody just wanted to know what's the difference between Sports Connect and US Soccer Connect. And so US Soccer Connect is basically the master platform. It's the overall platform uh, that we use at the state level and that uh, all of you as administrators uh, have access to at your club level. But then Club Connect is the uh, more or less the club registration tool where you have players register with the organization, you build your rosters, you can use it for scheduling and communications uh, and, and the such and uh, pass cards and everything you need for managing your club. So Sports Connect is the club component of the US Soccer Connect family. Um, let me just scroll down a little bit here. Uh, the people keep it, uh, several people asking about the key for safe sport is that we do not have the key on our website, neither are we allowed to provide that. So when you have that link in the, uh, when you go through the registration process, or if you go to the my account, you'll see a section on there that you click and the link is embedded in that. What that link does is that it basically connects us with U.S. Soccer's uh, part of the safe sport family. Uh, every other sport has different uh, different links. So uh, if you already set up your account, you don't need that link. It's already a part of your account. Uh, they know who you are. So you would just go into safe sport, uh, do the login, username and password, and you should be able to take your courses. Now remember, it is very important that your name and your email address are identical for what you use with us at US, US Soccer Connect, as well as with Safe Sport. Otherwise, we won't be able to find you. And that's where that uploading of a Safe Sport certificate comes into play because we won't get the API feed. Um, bear with me a second. Uh, question here is, I have a coach uh, who shows an application for the club, ABC Youth Soccer, but not an application for adult quarry. How did they do that? Presumably, they need both applications in order to get a credential. I, How is that possible that somebody could show up without the adult quarry appearing? I can answer that if you want, Mary. Sure. Uh, it's likely I'm going to go out on a big limb. You're using the club platform for your player registration. And that individual is registered as a volunteer on the club platform. And so that information pushes up 
uh, to the state once they are registered as a volunteer in your club portal, but you are correct in that they need to show both applications. So they will still need to come in and do their adult slash quarry registration um, online through the Sports Connect. Uh, don't want to screw up what the link is, but the link I put in the chat earlier, they'll still need to complete that registration and that application will show uh, in their profile as well. All right. Um, there was one more question. I think it's a one-off. I can handle this individually uh, with the person. Uh, any other questions, folks? Uh, please type them in now. Let me just go back and see if there's any other things that came in. Um, some of these were specific individual uh, matters. I know Andrew got back to somebody and somebody else. Uh, you'll get a couple of people contacting you, Mary, tomorrow. Okay. Um, and just once again, uh, some some of the people with the archived, uh, it, just to let you know that uh, if you see your organization is archived, it basically means is that the league that you're affiliated with for your for your play um, is now using Sports Connect to manage the league, and that you would need to find the league like the Roots Soccer League. If you go to Roots Soccer League then your town program should come up as a program under that league. And then that's where you would click and you're off and running. Yeah, and can I just say, Andrew, is there like, you can you can email me and I can help you out with that. Is is there, should they contact Sports Connect or you know US Soccer Connect at the association level? If they're seeing this, what's their best path for resolving that? I was on mute. Um, they can contact our support, the association tech support, uh, any of them can help. Um, and if not, they're going to escalate it to us. But uh, tech support is going to be able to help. Obviously, in a lot of these instances, if you see the change login and you have an option there, likely uh, that will move you into that uh, unarchived program that you would show the league hierarchy underneath. Did you have a uh, like anything on your screen that you can get to for the change login to show them real quick or no? Well, mine's a little bit different. I, I do have a lot of change logins here. Obviously, in most people, they would just see uh, one other option, which is going to be likely, um, you know, your club abbreviation. So if it were, you know, WYS1, you would click on that, you would see uh, in the. Okay. All right, I'm just going to. I'm gonna, quick, oh, I'm not screen. sharing my screen. I thought I was still, so that the example in my head was not as good as it could have been. So this is the change login button up on top, right? Yes. So you see, you see that, and that allows you to go to your different program. Like Andrew said, you're going to see at least you know one or two other programs up there that you can move uh, back and forth to by clicking on each one. Um, did have a question from somebody just regarding the adult uh, participation re registration agreement, the language, um, I believe. So uh, there's various <laughs> waivers, agreements, and, and disclosures and such. Uh, the language that we, uh, we want everybody to use for player registrations and for adult registrations is found on our website. If you go to massusoccer.org, uh, go to administration, and then on the right side, you'll see member toolkit. And then from there, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see a box that has the language that is supposed to be used with our member organizations for their registration um, processes. It has all the waivers, disclaimers, disclosures that, that should be used. Uh, Chris asked that question. Uh, Chris, you can type in the, uh, the Q&A if, if I uh, got it. Oh, there we go. Great. I helped somebody tonight. Um, okay. Uh, let me see. All right. And there was uh, something else came in that we'll we'll get to. I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, just going to go down one more time and take a last look. Um, 
Okay. And okay. Uh, and there's one person put a question, Mary, that I'm going to have them contact you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Beyond that, um, that looks like we're uh, we're done. Any final comments, Mary? Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thanks for taking time out of your evening to join us. And thank you for all you do. Um, your hard work is much appreciated. And we are here to help you. So if, if there's something we could do, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Okay. And thank you. All right. And Andrew, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Great thank partner you. to work with. And, uh, and thanks, everybody. Once again, if you need help, uh, you know how to reach Mary. <laughs> So have a great night. Take care. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Mike.